Uh, Luke, at the start, first of all, with the uh, frustrating weekend, uh, not having the match called off due to a frozen pitch at Chesterfield. Um, right call in the end, given what you know? Yeah, I mean, looking around the the league, I think every grass pitch was off in the division. So, um, yeah, I, I think that we, we would have to say that that was the right call. Um, but, yeah, hugely frustrating. Um, lots of Lots of preparation goes into the game and, and then of course if, if you don't have the game then the the days leading up to it were were not correct because you didn't work as hard as you would like to so it's difficult but many teams in the same position as us yeah I mean I think many thought that the late kickoff might help um, help not Sam and Chester but I suppose it, it wasn't to be in, in the end no I, th- I think you know that um, unless you have the the under soil heating or you have like uh some you know some sort of very expensive uh, you know the tents that they try to use even that I think with the women's game the other day they tented the entire pitch and it still wasn't good enough so yeah very frustrating but I don't think anything that anyone could do to to have changed the outcome yeah uh, what did you and the players do instead was there a way of getting a training session on or anything like that to sort of keep the players in uh, in shape well no we we travelled um, because we. We needed to leave uh, Meadow Lane before the pitch inspection was was completed, and uh, we arrived at the uh, pre-match um, meal for the pre-match meal, and uh, then we found out. So we we had a we had our meal, um, and we travelled back, and by then was was too too late. The um, the the dark was drawing in, so unfortunately we we couldn't do anything. So we've been training, we've been training since. Yeah, how has that uh, altered the plans for Tuesday night's, uh, Tuesday night's trip to Solihull? Yeah, it's very, very difficult. It it really is um, because, uh, like I say, everything is out of alignment. We no- normally would train very hard at the beginning of the week and taper down towards the game, ready for a very intense game. Um, but now that you know the everything is is wrong because we didn't have that big dose of of, of uh, high intensity football on on the match day the game was off um, so now we prepare again the best way that we can to try and be in the, in the best physical condition mentally in the best condition for tomorrow yeah and you pick the players up after after a disappointment like that when you put all the effort into training and then there's, there's no game and then thankfully there's a game not too far away but like you say it does um, scope the plan somewhat difficult but we we have to try to to convince uh, the players that um there's a, a good reaction and a bad reaction and that we have to be strong enough to, to make a good reaction to to the adversity and um, simple as that. And then we, we have to try to, as a group of staff, and uh, try to reinforce when we see the guys making a really good practice and really good body language and energy after this disappointment, we have to try to jump on that. And um, I, I must say the, the, the players were brilliant yesterday in training and good today in training. So... I can't complain with with the way they re- react to the disappointment of not playing Chesterfield. Yeah, I mean it's a, a long time to wait um, between games now since the FA Trophy defeat and um, Tuesday night's trip to Hot so, uh, Solihull. If it's on, of course, is it difficult to keep that momentum going when, when there is a postponement? Well, like I say, we're very it's very very challenging, but um, the response has been good in training. Now we have to see a really good response in the in the game, and then we feel confident that we we done everything. In the best way we could, and 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 now we we need to to we need to we need a show, you know, we need show time again, and we've done all our preparation, we changed all our plans, and we try to prepare again a new game, and and try to talk about how we have to respond and everything that we can possibly think of to do, but now we have to see it in action. But the players are chopping a bit to get out there, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm sure they're they're desperate to to play for sure. Yeah, um, let's talk about the, the preparation for for the Solihull game. Um, looking back at when you played Solihull um, back, back in August, it was a very intense, uh, pretty much a one-sided game with loads and loads of chances. Is that something you're preparing for again uh, when you go there on Tuesday night? Yeah, I mean, we 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 prepare to to try to play in a in the way that we 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 have played all season. I think we we've really we've really changed wholesale in terms of like our, our game model. We, we we don't flip from from one week to, to to the other too much. Of course, like personnel and some changes 
subtle changes in the tactics, but no, we want to try to make a performance that represents us and, and be aggressive on, on the front foot as much as we can. And we know that uh, Solihull are a very good team and they have they have very talented players in, in there. So we you know we, we, we're aware of everything, but really we have to we have to make sure that we get our side right and perform in a way that we, we know is, is good for us. But how do you maintain that? Oh, Luke, you talked about uh, sort of trying to play the way that you want to play, but it must be difficult, given the intensity and the speed in which you play, to, to maintain that throughout a, a long season such as this. How do you go about maintaining that? Well, that, well that's the challenge. And, and you know, we, we, we've we seen many times the team has changed and, and probably I'm sure the cha- that sometimes the changes are unexpected and, and can be um, unsettling for the fans, I'm sure, I know. Um, but I think on the whole... Um, most of the time we, we're, we're in a good place when we make changes because it's about uh, me being able to recognise players you know, if they're in a good place or a bad place and good energy um, certain players for certain games that I think are really key so I think between myself and the players we have to, we have to pick uh, the right moments for people and the right formation for people and uh, for me, it's about really having to try to have my finger on the pulse with the group. And for the players, it's about them trying to convince me that they're ready and that it, it's the right game for them. So between us, we need to work in that way and have that honesty together. And um, that's our chance to maintain intensity and, and, uh, and quality as well. Yeah. Uh, looking to Tuesday, uh, any injury updates on players who, uh, who haven't featured of late? Now the only thing that we have um, now is that people are closer to the action without having missed a game, quite simply. But um, so the, there's nothing significant that that I can tell you. But but players that have been signed lied are are moving much closer to to being able to be included in the squad. And and like I say, they missed for sure one less game um, than they would have done. I suppose that helps, uh, doesn't it? I suppose uh, with the uh, postponement, uh, the fact that you can get sort of players on the training pitch when you can, just to try and give them a bit of a boost to try and get, uh, get a little bit fitter going forward in the, uh, in the next run of games. Yeah, as I say, I mean that those players uh, have now have now missed one less game than they would have done had the, the game gone ahead. So, one small positive that we we maybe have a, a bigger squad to select from um, and players in, players in a, in a better place than they would have been. So. That's one thing that we can take away from 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 the game being postponed. And very finally, uh, after the Wrexham result on the weekend, it means that both you and Wrexham are both on the same goal difference and the same number of points as well. I think there's a couple of games uh, between you. But how difficult is it to, to focus on yourselves when you've got teams like Wrexham and Chesterfield still chasing that uh, that top spot? Well, I think at this stage it's not honestly too difficult because there is a, a lot of football to be played and, and many many things can happen. Yeah, of course. I think going into the, you know, if you if you if you're in the last couple of games of the season, then then it matters hugely what happens elsewhere. But at this moment in time, uh, we have to really just focus on on making really good performances one after the other, train well, prepare well, and and like I say, try and arrive on match day in, in the best possible place that we can be uh, until you know until the really really business end when other things can can come into play. Perfect. All right, well, uh, I wish you well for Tuesday, Luke. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Hi, Luke. Um, you mentioned last week um, about, you know, the preparing for games. Normally, you prepare for games maybe a month or two in advance. So, you were due to have um, a rest on the 14th um, with the FA Trophy game being postponed with Eastley. Uh, I just wanted to know, is that, you know, d- again, d- further disrupted your preparation? Did you have something planned for that weekend off or were you planning on doing something anyway? Carly, yeah. Um... No, it's been it's been very very challenging because, yeah, uh, for the staff and the players and everybody here, I, I always try to give a, a month schedule with as much detail in that as possible. I think that that brings uh, a sense of of like of control and clarity, and for me, it's really important. Uh, and of course, we've had to change the schedule significantly. Um, with the cup games is something that you can factor in if we win we do this if we don't we do the other and we can have some type of template but when the games are postponed it's very very challenging so now we we are changing the schedule almost uh every every two or three days we're changing the schedule um but because we have like a 
you know, we have uh, almost everything else around those changes mapped out, then we can survive somewhat and try to, again, try to come up with a schedule for a month in advance and sometimes six weeks we have in front of us stretched out where we know exactly the times and, and when we're training and when we're playing and when we're traveling. So we try our very best as a group of staff now to, to keep um, coming together as a group and brainstorming the right the right thing, change a day here and there uh, for recovery or the times we report so people have more time when they're traveling and things like this. So it is very, very challenging, but um, that's the that that's what's in front of us and we have to deal with that best we can. Do you think the postponement benefits Chesterfield more than it does to you? Because obviously Paul Cook was set to not be on the sidelines for that game. And then there's a, been uh, something out earlier today that there was a stomach bug going round the club as well. So do you feel as though that benefits them more than it does to you or is there certain advantages that you can take from that as well? Yeah, I, I mean, look, we I don't know because I, I don't know the extent of, of, of what, what the... the the squad was suffering. I saw them play against West Brom um, and they looked very good, uh, very sh healthy, strong squad um, and really was, I don't, in my opinion, was not a, you know, four goals in difference. I thought they were very good, very impressive. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't think uh, Paul Cook is, is concerned about um, anything and, and of course there was nothing that anyone can do with a frozen pitch. That's just, uh, you know, a, uh, a scenario that can, can that can't be affected either way. Um, yeah, of course, with Cookie not being on the sideline, I think would have been would have been a loss for them. Um, but I don't know if it would have you know, benefited us more or them more. I don't know. We have a f couple of injuries, so maybe we have a f more full squad to pick from the next time around, possibly. So I don't know. So looking ahead to um, tomorrow. Uh, you've got the chance to equal the club record of uh, 19 games uh, without defeat in the league. Is that in the back of your mind or even in the back of the players' mind? I, I think that um, at this stage of the season, I think that we we know that we are you know, close to a few records, a few different records for the club, I'm sure. And um, yeah, I think that it can give an added motivation and, and can give a, a sense of power to the to the group or to put into perspective you know their their results this season so far and um, I think it might maybe you know one 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 thing that we can add to our you know to our preparation to, to try to motivate the players even more um, definitely I think it's a you know it's a great thing to be able to achieve because it's not it's not insignificant amount of time to go without losing a game of football. And then uh, it wouldn't be a January press conference without some transfer news. Um, there's been a couple of reports um, on social media that there's been some interest in Solihull Moors by Joe Sabara. Just wanted to know if there's any truth in that at all. Um, I think I think that um, Joe is a player that's been been flagged up um, from e even before I I joined the club. Um, he's been in been been watched and he's in the system, and I think that would be no surprise to anyone because he's a a very high performer in the level and uh, has a really good uh, character references as well. You know, he's a good guy. So um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not surprised to to, to hear that uh, one or two people talking about this. But of course, at the moment, um, it's not our business because he's he's under contract with Solihull, and until you know, until we're we're serious to make a you know an actual approach for a player, is not fair really to talk about that but I think it's fair to talk about the, the qualities of the player and the fact that we know and we appreciate how, how good he is of course yeah I'm not going to deny that and um, I, I know for sure that he's a player that has been has been has been analysed by the, the recruitment team here so we we'll see is there any more potential incoming before the end of the window or is that uh, something that you seem to keep quiet on uh, no, I would I would say uh, it's wrong of me to talk about names of players because, as I say, um, until we are really really um, committed um, to a, you know to, to make an offer and his common knowledge, I don't think it's fair because that can cause you know uh, discomfort for an opposition manager if there's you know if something is not serious, but the player hears this type of thing is really unsettling and it's not not something that I want to engage in. Um, but of course, when when we get to the the 
the stage where we're very, very committed, then it's, it's completely different because we're we're then at a the table in a respectful way. I'm trying to you know make a, a proper approach for a player.